able to read and write uh, from and to a file. So we are still working on chapter 3. I have done some prep work. First of all, I created a text file. My text file has four lines of data, first name, last name, the department that the person works in, and it has a few numbers. The second line has a salary and a bonus in percentage, and the third line has the number of miles traveled by the person and the hours it has taken. And the last line has the number of coffee mugs the person sold and the price per cup. So we, our job is to, let's go take a look here. I started my program. Um, the, our job is to read from the file. In data.txt file has four lines of data. The first line contains this information, which we just talked about. Our job is to write a program that calculates the total salary. So we have the salary and the bonus. We can calculate the total salary. The average speed, we have the total miles and the number of hours. So we can calculate the average speed and the total sales amount for the coffee mugs. So we have the price of one mug and we have the number of mugs sold and we can find the total amount. And it doesn't say really what we are supposed to do with the output. Uh, but it does say that your program should work such that if the input file changes, which means if I go in here and change my number of coffee mugs to 80 or change the salary or whatever, the output should change, which means we need to use variables for all of these numbers and be able to calculate it. And it also doesn't say whether we should output it to the console or output it to the file. So let's see if we can do both. Output Let's say, output your results to the console and a file called outdata.txt. So one thing to remember is where does this file exist? Now, I have added it to my resource files. You don't have to do that. But the more important thing is to find out where it exists in your folder level. You have to make sure you, at, at least in the beginning, you can put it anywhere you want, but in order for you to be able to write programs easily and to be able to read from the file without any issues, I would put it, notice I have it under my projects folder module 3, module 3, where the rest of my CPP files are. Now, it's not important that you put it with your CPP file, but it's important you put it in this project folder for right now. For starters, make sure your file is in this folder, projects, module 3, module 3, which is where my folder is. Now, the reason I have added it here is to just make it easy for me to edit the data and change and see how my program runs. Now, you could always not add it here under resource files, and you could just open it using Notepad, and it should work the same. Now, do not use any Word applications for any of these. Simply use a very basic text editor like Notepad. We'll do it. OK, now let's take a look at our program. I have IO Stream. We need that. I have IO Manip. We need that to be able to format my output since we are calculating price and miles and things like that. And we need another header file or a library file called fstream for file stream. So this helps us read input from a file and write to a file. OK, now let's get started. The first thing we need is variables. To be able to read from a file, we need a file stream variable. So to be able to read from an input file, to read from an input file, we need an if stream variable. If stands for input file. So if stream in file is what I'm going to call it. Okay. Now you can use that in file, which is our stream variable, to link to the file, use it to open the file, and to read data. So that is the main goal of this program. We're going to see how to do that. Now, before we do that, let's take a look at our text file and see all the different variables we are going to need. So we need first name, last name, and department. And those three happen to be strings. So we need three strings variable. So let's say string, first name, last name, and department like that. So now I'm using string. Best for me to include string as well. I might want to do something 
with them. Okay, then we also need salary and bonus. So that would be a double. Double salary equals zero. Always initialize your variables. Bonus equals zero. Um, we need a few others. Let's see here. Miles and hours. They both could be doubles as well. So miles equals zero. Hours or time. You could say time equals zero. And one more thing. Now this is a number of coffee mugs. That should be an integer. We're not going to sell 25 and a half coffee mugs. Um, so that would be an int and the price of a cup 1.5. Now that would be a double. So call it price equals zero. So those are our double variables. Now let's declare my int int um, coffee mugs. Let's call it um, mug quantity. Always again name your variables um, that make sense. Call them what they are supposed to be. So mug quantity, I'm going to initialize it to zero. All right, so we are going to read all of these from the user. You don't want to, or from the file, you don't want to look at the file and put in mugs equals 75 because that won't work. If you put that in, the next time I change my mugs to 80, we're going to have to come here and change our program, and we really don't want to do that. So we're going to read it all from the file. So every time the file changes, our program will change. Okay, so now we got that done. It's time to open the file and read from it. Okay, so in file dot again we use our dot, which is our member access operator. In file dot open, and you need to give it the name of the file in double quotes because it is literally the name. We are not using any variables. So in file dot open, and this is the name of the file. Notice. I don't have any path in here. So that is the reason I would like to put the file in this folder. If it exists in this folder, in my projects folder, then I don't need to put a path in there. But if you put it anywhere else, then you must put a path in there, which we will see as we go on. For right now, I am going to leave it in that folder to make it easy on us. And I'm just going to read it. File name, remember, inside of double quotes. Okay, so we open the file. Now we're going to read from the file. So notice again, what are we reading? We're going to start off with the first line. First name, space, last name, space, department. So when we do that, the first name can be read using our extraction operator because there is no space here. We want it to stop reading at the space. So the best thing to do in this case even though I told you not to use the extraction operator for strings, since this is the first time we are reading from a file, again, for ease of use is the best thing for us at this point in time. Don't want to make things too complicated. So in file, extraction operator, first name, will read Michelle into F name. Now I'm going to keep going. Another extraction operator. What's next? Robinson, last name. So that is going to get read into L name and then extraction operator. I'm going to keep going till the end of the line. Accounting is the department. So department and there I am going to stop. Now remember the extraction operator will ignore all the spaces and when it gets to new line, it is also going to ignore the new line. And now my cursor technically is sitting at the beginning of the second line. So I am ready to read data from the second line at this point in time. So let's read the second line data in file. I could have continued right here. I could have gone this way, but I'm just trying to keep the different lines separate. So we simply continue in file and that first number, which happens to be the salary, goes into my salary variable that I have there. So in file salary and bonus. So I'm going to just read all my variables first. Again, the new line gets ignored. Now we're sitting at the third line and we need to read miles and time. So in file, miles and time. Now, again, my extraction operator ignores the new line. We are sitting at the fourth line. 
in file and we're going to read mug quantity and price so at this point in time you do not have to worry about data validation or checking for input failure because doing that from a text file is is beyond the scope of this class so we're going to assume that all data in the text file is good so this section right here we've essentially opened the file and read all the data now it's time to do some calculations manipulate your data do whatever calculations we are required to do for this program so the first thing we were we were required to do was to calculate the total salary so let's calculate the total salary now we need some more variables for that so i'm going to create a couple more called total salary equals zero and we also need a total price of the mugs so let's create one more called total price equals zero and we were required to calculate the average speed so it's called average speed equals zero okay let's start out with calculating total salary now you write down your formula first if you're not sure we know that we are given the bonus as a percentage so this would be salary plus now you remember all your parentheses salary times bonus over 100 so 5 would become 0 0.05 times the salary salary plus the original salary will give us the total salary so make sure you get all your formula right and you do all your order of precedence and you can always put this inside a parenthesis again if you're not sure there's no harm in putting as many parentheses as you can or as you want now the next thing would be total price no let's actually do average speed first average speed equals miles over time okay and total price equals mug quantity times price all right so all the calculations taken care of now we're going to output it all format and output to use a very important always so the first thing we are going to set is our precision remember we have a lot of uh, decimal numbers so we're going to set out see out fixed show point oops show point and set precision to two so then let's just output and of course total price is dollar so we want to put a dollar sign there or the sales amount and for right now I am going to simply say return zero so we haven't quite finished all our requirements we have only output it to the screen notice I have not output it to my file we also need to before we end our program we must close the file that we opened our input file so in file dot close will take care of closing the file notice in file is associated only with one file so you don't put the name of the file in here you simply say dot close and it closes the file that is open in association with in file and that's only one file called in data text all right so let's just go through this real quick and see what we have done we have a file stream variable for if stream to open our file we called it in file we have all our variables defined we have opened the file we read from the file again notice we use only extraction operators because all our data is separated by spaces so you must know what's on what line to be able to read this in order and since we are using the extraction operator the new line and everything gets ignored and you don't have to worry about any of those then we manipulate the data and we output it to the screen we are not yet outputting it to the file so let's build it and run it and see what we get and then the next step would be to output it to the file. 